No Other Life presents Upstaged. Complacency. To tell you some of my experience about complacency. And the, the focus for this is a piece I wrote called Drift from my album Blue Wing. In the context of the album that it was a part of, this complacency came through as two people living together. Um, Believing that something that was on the horizon really wasn't there. And I think that many of us have been through something quite similar to this in our lives. And it doesn't really matter at this moment the circumstances of that actual experience. um, Because I think we can all internalize it in some way or other. When we begin our adult lives and we set out to begin our experiences in the world, we have an idea of what is coming. We, we envision our futures. I think even those of us who just say that they're winging it and going to see what happens, that in itself is part of the prediction. This, oh, I'm just going to see where the wind takes me. Well, that is a prediction for your future. I really don't think anyone is capable of waking up one morning and just seeing where things go. Because just seeing where things go is in itself a self-fulfilling prophecy. And as we go through our lives, we reach certain milestones where we've been trying to get to this achievement, this new home, this new job, this new relationship. And when we get to it and we surpass that point, um, we've reached the point where we are in this new world. And we are no longer trying to achieve that particular to-do list item. Now, what that ends up meaning is that we either need to begin a new pursuit, hopefully in a different category of our lives. It's, it would be unfortunate if we tried to get a new home and then immediately tried to get another one. But... I'm sure it happens, and probably for good reason in some instances. But let's just say, for example, that you've achieved something, and you begin to think about the next chapter. Now, in actuality, you may not really know what that new chapter is at the moment that you begin it. But your mind is open to whatever may come. You, you hope and you um, believe on the fact that something good will come for you. And complacency sets in at those times when we don't have a next step in mind. We've reached so far for one particular goal. We meet that goal and then we don't know what to do next. Now... As part of my Parkinson's journey, I believe complacency is dangerous when we reach the point of thinking that we have figured everything out. And part of the reason for this is that Parkinson's is known for pulling the rug out from under you. You believe that you have it mastered at any particular time. All your symptoms are in check through a delicate combination of medicine and exercise and diet and schedule and sleep and all these things 
are working for you today. But what happens when that next symptom shows up? And you know it's going to happen because it's a degenerative progressive condition. You're never done experiencing the curiosities that await. One of the first things that I realized was with young onset Parkinson's, it's not going to shorten my life substantially. So I have potential decades in which to find out just how interesting this is going to get. And I still believe that because in the five years that I've known of this diagnosis, in the 15 to 20 years that I've been experiencing the symptoms, it has been an adventure. It has constantly been trying to change who I am. It's constantly been trying to catch me off guard. And once you attain complacency, once you believe that you are all set, that's when you start to experience worse symptoms. That's when you have more off periods than on. And if you're not careful to control that, if you're not careful to at least be aware of that, that will be your fate. But for those of us who want to continue to learn, continue to experience things through other people's eyes um, and through other people's own experiences, I think a much brighter future awaits us because that's what it's really all about is trying to get ahead of this. Now, you can never fully get ahead. You can never vanquish this enemy. And for that reason, I never like to call it my enemy because Parkinson's is a part of me. There's nothing I can do about that. And so once I give in and say, this is my combatant, then every morning I wake up in a war, fighting a battle, and I don't want to do that. I would never wake up, look in the mirror, and curse myself for not being a particular height or for not having a certain eye color or for having some uh, hair color or style that I don't care for because those are all essential parts of who I am. And Parkinson's, for better or worse, is one of those things. It's a part of me. It's in me. Do I wish it weren't? Do I wish I hadn't come upon this? Probably. But what's the point of wondering that? What's the point of role-playing what life would be like without this diagnosis? There's a lot of good and bad both that I could come up with as not having experienced on account of this occasion. So I really think that it's important that we fight by being ready, by being on the edge of our seat, wondering what will come next, planning ahead, and doing everything we can to make today's symptoms the best that I can live with. I can't really do much about tomorrow's because I don't know what they will be. Um, I can definitely do nothing about yesterday's because Some of those have gone away, some have transitioned, some have gotten much worse. It's just not for me to worry about that. But today, one thing that I can do is to not breed complacency and instead to live a life that looks like the one that I want to be living five years, ten years down the line. And for me, that's all about exercise and playing and keeping music in my mind and doing everything I can to keep my brain able to remember the important things in my life and and all of the people around me and the great stories and so on. Now, when you get into a relationship complacency, this is a very tricky and tough part of life to be in. Nobody wants to be in a complacent relationship. Nobody intends to be. 
But we all do fall into those periods where what we have going works for the moment, or it did work, and we're not paying attention to the current day. And sometimes we need a spark to say, well, wait a minute, what is it that I care about? What, what are the most important things in my life? Um, I recently had an opportunity to experience this firsthand when COVID struck our household. Um, I was telling my family, we're not going to be able to see you for the holidays And my sister rightfully said, you're four years late. Why did you wait this long to develop COVID? Well, I sure tried. And um, in spite of everything I've done, this thing is a persistent bugger. And that was my lot for the first few days of the holiday. Now, coming into Christmas week, I tested positive, and I thought, oh, goodness, now what are we going to do? And I really didn't want my wife to get sick because she um, she and I both have never had a diagnosis of COVID. So I did what we were told to do a few years back, secluded myself in one room, We would text each other anytime one of us was about to head out into the common spaces of our small home. Unfortunately, we still had to share the one bathroom that we have, but we were wiping it down and doing just about everything that we could think of. In fact, we did do everything we could think of. And in the evening, she would be watching TV in one room and I in another, and we were texting as if we were in a long-distance college relationship, and then we would sleep separately. And this only lasted for three days, but it felt like an entire lifetime to me. We are always together, and this was weird. Now, A day or two into my stint, she started to develop symptoms. Not surprising because for the week prior, we pretty much were exposed to everything together at the same time. So whether she and I got it from the same source or I gave it to her, at any rate, she was a few days behind me. And when she contacted her doctor, she said, you know, my husband is in this same boat. Uh, do we need to continue to hide from each other? And and I guess the doctor actually said, no, you can spread the love if you're pretty confident that you got it from each other or from the same source, then it's very likely the same strain or variant, and there's no way that you can get worse by hanging out with each other. So she came into the room that I was in and opened the door and said, I can spread the love. And she gave me the biggest hug. And we just stood there for a second. felt really weird after just a few days, I must say, to be touching anyone, let alone the person who in this world I would least want to get ill with me. But after we looked through some CDC PDFs and figured out exactly what we were choosing to do by being in the same rooms with each other, we were suddenly comfortable with this. And I realized that week all that I really have taken for granted. And I never would have called it that. I definitely did not believe that I was taking for granted the ability to freely walk in my house, the ability to sit on the couch beside my wife and lie beside her overnight, breathing on each other and um, just generally unaware or not caring about all those things that maybe you are taking for granted in your life. 
And I sure hope that I don't ever forget what we just went through. Um, I'd certainly be a fool if I do. But for the time and place, for the time being, I am feeling quite different. Um, paying more attention to what's going on, watching movies and not playing with a, an iPad beside it, enjoying time in a much different way than I did even a week ago as we were heading into what we hoped would be the, the joyful Christmas season. I might have been focused on things that weren't related to the season at hand and to being with the person who's most important to me. And I need a lot more time to process that and see whether this is an actual change brought on by a difficult situation. That's absolutely true. But right now, I definitely feel changed. And as we head back into the music, this movement called Drift, my mother was fighting a few things, not entirely publicly, but we learned about them later on. Um, there was some conditions with her heart, and she was going to do something about that right away. But then she would end up developing an infection in a leg that really required center stage treatment. And that was with her for the much greater part of the following year. But during that period where they thought that this one particular uh, condition was going to be an issue, and then it immediately got usurped in pride of position by another, it became a, uh, one of these situations of complacency. You think one thing is at bay, and you might not be as vigilant about what could be coming. Now, with Parkinson's disease, I can speak clearly about this because these are my stories and not that of parents. With PD, the thing that I'm always aware of is something else is lurking. Um, I know the potential symptoms that I will experience over time, and right now I'm not experiencing all of them, and some of them I never will experience, but I know what they are. And I'm trying incredibly hard to appreciate those that have not happened to me yet. And by that, I mean, for example, taste and smell. Many of my peers, both in Parkinson's and in COVID, have lost a sense of taste or smell. And I can't fathom what that's like. Now, there might be a symptom that I'm experiencing in which they can't imagine. So there's really not a competition here to see who can have the most symptoms. But be aware of the ones that you are not experiencing now. Be aware of those things that you could be taking for granted. Maybe you realize that um, you could lose your sense of smell. Maybe you could lose uh, your sight or your hearing. Then play music, dance, sing, do everything you can to experience those senses now. Someday any one of us could lose an appendage. So use what you have right now to create and to dance and to climb and play with kids. Do all of it now because you never know what tomorrow will bring. And if you wake up tomorrow with a situation that is completely different than that which you had last night, you may live a life of regret and say, I never truly paid attention to what my favorite chocolate cake tasted like. I knew it was my favorite, but I never really paid attention. I was always just gobbling it down. Well, today, friends, 
If you are able to taste that cake, if you are able to smell the, the soot in the fireplace that you are enjoying in your home, if you are able to hear a symphony and see a work of art, don't take it for granted. Live it, love it, and you will be far happier today and if you ever need to be in the future, you will be relieved that you had taken all that time to really enjoy your life and to smell those tulips, as they say.
That was the complete track, Drift, from my album, Blue Wing, written, performed, and produced by Rick Seaholm in early 2023. If you like hearing this track, you can rewind and hold your tape recorder up to the speaker and catch yourself a copy, or head over to bandcamp.com, search Rick Seaholm Blue Wing, and get yourself a copy there. Many thanks to you, friends. Enjoy. Upstaged and the No Other Life Project are independently conceived and managed by me, Rick Seaholm, ad-free and without interruption for all listeners, and I appreciate all your support. Subscribe, leave a review, and please spread the word. It's the number one way to keep it going. Friends, you have no other life, and it's the grandest improv session of them all. Own what you bring to the scene, and share it with all those around you. <laughs>